Hey guys, how's it going? This is Denver again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty, pretty excited today and the reason for that is because I'm actually going to be sharing how I went about level design for Cubics. A lot of you have asked me if I actually went in and manually created the levels and what I'm going to show you is basically a data structure that I, that I created to create the levels dynamically. So a lot of times I talk about that in, in social media. And the reason why I like to do things dynamically is because it allows me to make changes very quickly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump into Unity and start showing you some of that process. All right guys, so I'm here in Unity and I have Visual Studio Code open on the right hand side. So what I wanna show you is how I go about loading levels and creating levels in Cubics. And you can see that I have basically a JSON file open and that JSON file is basically the representation of what you see on the screens. So let me actually go to level two, which is what this level is. So the way, the way that it works is I, I have different attributes on this JSON file. So I have layers, I have rows, and then I also have a list of settings that I can set. So, and then I have a bunch of numbers that basically represent each one of the tiles that you see on the screen. So let me show you level 69, which is a little more in depth. So in level 69, I can set the atmosphere and that basically determines what background I'm gonna be showing for the player on that level. I also have the camera view and this is the orthographic size. In this level, I decided to use 22. And then I have some other settings whether the cube can actually fall from other floors. And the generator is basically to determine how much I want to wait until I load the level. So in this one, I have a delay of 0.01. And then I have multiple, basically multiple layers, which are basically floors in the game. Within the layers, I have a settings option and that settings options is basically determining if I want to offset the entire floor in the X, Y, or Z axis. So if I want to move this entire thing a little bit to the left, I could, or to the right, or basically if I want to go deep, I could actually do that. So if I go back to, let's actually go back to level two, and I'm going to go back to the game, and I'm going to hit reload. You can see that everything is created dynamically, and I'm going to look at the hierarchy. So I want you to pay attention to the environment. If I hit reload, all the tiles are reloaded. If I, they also get destroyed as soon as I hit reload. And if I go back to the main menu, hit play, say that we want to go to level one this time, level one is loaded. And say that I want to beat it, level two it's loaded, and all the tiles are loaded. So when I, when I was working on Cubics, I, I didn't want to do anything manually because it was going to slow me down. I wanted to basically move quickly when, you know, creating levels and prototyping different, you know, levels. So one thing that I noticed from, from my previous games is that by moving things manually and it, it was just basically a lot of time consuming. So instead of doing that, I decided to create a structure that represented each level. And then I could easily test those changes and, and basically play the game with small, a small little effort. So if we go back to, so we're on level two, let's say that we want to go and make a change to level two. And I'm going to, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to go back to level 69. And I'm actually going to, let's actually grab these two settings and we're going to paste them into level two. And instead of showing a blue background, I'm going to show a light gray background. And also on the size of the screen, if we look at the, actually the orthographic size, right now it's set to 22. So let's set this to say to 30 so that you can see the change. And I'm going to leave everything the same. So if I hit reload, nothing is going to happen. And the reason why nothing happens is because I need to tell the system to reload that level. And the way that I did it is by going into game and I added a button called reload level data. So if I click on that, then what happened is basically Unity went through a procedure that I created and it reloaded the level information into memory. So now if I hit reload, everything gets reloaded. So you can kind of see that I zoom out just a tiny bit. Let's say that we want to go the other way. We want to go maybe 15 or yeah, 15 it's fine. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit reload data and I'm gonna now we can see that we're zooming in quite a bit and I can play the level and now we're on level three so now if I want to go back to level three let's actually make so right now I have basically white tiles and then I have so this level is pretty simple so let's actually make it a little more complex so I want to explain to you what this means so let's go into Google Docs and this is a way that I structure the data and what it means to me so and basically what it means to the game so the the way that this works is every one of the levels I'm, I'm drawing I'm, I'm basically giving it numbers and I have the start point as number one and then my max is the orange color and then everything in between is a number two and then the zero means the, those are white space and then I is basically always the, the starting position so if we go to and, I'll, and I also have a legend that determines what each one of these are so if you want to look take a look at that so N means you know the the tiles in between the start and the the end and if you yeah so two 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 that means you know all of all of these ones so if i go back to let's say level three that we're looking at so these two represent the y area and then three represents the orange right there and then number one and then i is basically where i want to start so when i'm trying to calculate where, where i want to draw the tiles I'm always looking at I as a starting point. So that's my pivot point. So let's actually make this level, level a little more difficult. So I'm going to add a couple of a couple of rows there and I'm going to just make all that white. Let's say that I wanted to make it a little bit longer and I don't need those zeros, but I use them for just for, you know, so that I can tell that those are white, those are white space. So numbers, they make more sense to me. So, okay, perfect. So let's say that we want to, actually let's make it a little longer. And I think that's fine. So now how, how I actually add that to the game. And so all I do is I actually copy that area and I go back into here. So we're on level three and I paste everything in there then what I do is I look for any Y space and then I convert the Y space to a comma. And, and then all I'm doing is basically formatting the, the data so that it's valid JSON. And let's just add a couple more. Okay, perfect. So that's perfect. So now that's level three. So now let's go back to Unity. I'm going to hit reload data and I'm going to hit reload you can kind of see that we added more tiles and that it's a representation of and we can actually play it so let's see if I can beat it no nope. let me try it one more time <laughs> and that's the you know the testing that you have to do if you're if you're doing these these levels oh actually that won't work so we created a brand new level and it's it's a playable level so let me go back to, to the JSON file. So let's actually look at a level that is a little bit more complicated. So let's look at level, the level 69. And in the way that I that I do this, I say that I wanted to play that without actually going. So I can actually override the level number here, and then I can hit reload, and it's actually gonna take me to level level 69. So there's a lot of things going on in this level. I can actually, so I can do that and I can actually fall. So there's actually a setting in this level specifically that allows the red cube to fall. And that's this property right here. So if I wanted to, if I didn't want that behavior and I go back to Unity, I hit reload, reload the level. And I can't not fall, and that's because it, that is constrained by that property. So I'm going to go back here, set it to true, reload level data. And now I can fall. 
So the other tile types that I have is I have a black tile and those tiles never go away. I also have kind of a darker gray, which you have to visit twice before they can disappear. So, oops, there we go. So how do I determine those? I, if we go back to our, our Google document, I have different, different settings in here, basically different tile types. So in is basically any tile in between the starting point and the end. The end mean, that means that's the minimum. That's basically your starting point. Max is where you, you know, your goal. And then N of H, that represents how many times you have to visit a tile to go away. So if I wanted this tile to be, you know, let's say that on level two, I needed to visit this tile twice before it disappears. So I could actually set that to 2H. If I want it to be three times, I could set it to 3H. In the, in the entire game, I didn't use 3H, I only used 2H, but I, but I can do it if I, you know, if I wanted to in some of the levels. I felt like 2H was enough for, for the complexity of the game. I didn't really think I needed to go beyond that. So let's actually, and then, and then C, these are basically teleports. So if I want to connect from, let's say, N of C to, so let's say that I wanted to connect from 2C to 3C, I would say that to 2C and then 3C will be the target where I wanted to go. So if we, Let's go down to a level that has a C. For example, this one has a lot of teleports. So if we go, let's go into level 33. And I can show you how that works. And I'm going to hit reload. So on this one I have, so I could teleport from, from this one to that one. I can visit this tile multiple times and that teleported me to this one. Okay, so perfect. So that's what these ones represent. The the other thing that I that I also did on this level, let's say that I want to I want to I want to have some walls that are let's see that are actually taller. So I have some levels like that. If we go into let's go into level 14. And I can hit reload. So level 14 has, you know, a few walls that are a little the same height as, as the red cube. And the way that I did that is I actually implemented a plus and a minus. So if I want to go down and say that I wanted to, I wanted to resize this cube and, and make it taller. So I could actually do a negative number instead of a positive number. If I wanted this to be, let's say 20, and I wanted this one to be 15, and let's say this one is going to be 10 and I go into reload it and I hit reload. Uh, oh, this is in Google. So you got to go, you got to make the changes in the, in the actual file. So we are looking at level 14. So let's go into our 14 file and I'm actually not going to paste it. I'm just going to make the changes here. Let's say this one is 15, this one is 10. And let's make this one 11. And we can hit reload and you can see that the, the walls are actually taller now. So that's basically what I, as far as like the data, how the data is structured. I also show you some of the, some of the settings in level 69. And one of them is, you know, the atmosphere, the camera view size, the whether you can fall or not, and then the generator. So the way that those ones are coded, and I'm going to show you just a little bit of it, is these are all serializable structures. So on the settings, I have the offset of X, Y, and Z, and whether I can fall or not, then the atmosphere. So they're all very simple objects. And I also have default, you know, camera sizes that I, that I have on a static class. I also have a generator that has a default delay and or layer information and also the main object which is the level object that is basically representing the entire the entire json object so that's basically everything that i wanted to cover in this video if you guys have any other other questions let me know through the comments and don't forget to share and subscribe thank you guys